In this video, we're going to see photodiode as a photo detector. Here I have shown the circuit symbol of photodiode with incident light and its characteristics in the reverse bias because we are going to discuss only in this region where it is going to function as a photo detector. So this is the current under no incident light on the photodiode. And now as we keep increasing the incident light's intensity, the reverse current would keep increasing because the number of electron hole pairs generated would be higher. Hence, the current keeps increasing as we increase the incident light intensity. So as intensity increases, the reverse current magnitude would keep increasing. The most commonly used diode for photo detection is a pin diode. I have taken the structure of pin diode here where this is the P region and this is the I region and this is the N region which stands for PIN and we have an anti-reflection coating so that most of the incident light would go into the pin diode and we have metal contacts here which contacts this P region in this place and in this place and if you see in three dimension this would be a single contact connected together now I've shown the circuit how it is connected as well that there is a load resistor which we are calling simply R and this pin diode is biased at a reverse bias at let's say VR. And now let's draw the energy band diagram at this operating point for this pin diode in this way that I'm going to take P plus I region, intrinsic region and N region and draw the energy band diagram. I have shown the energy band diagram of a PIN diode here under reverse bias where the voltage applied is VR. Hence, the Fermi energy levels would split and the difference between them would be Q times VR which is shown here. And there would be electric field in the depletion regions and in the intrinsic region which is shown here that electric field is directed in the negative X direction because the slope of this energy band diagram is negative. And when light is incident, when the photons are absorbed in the p-side where electron holes are generated this electron could diffuse and actually get into this region where there is electric field which would take this electron let's say it diffuses and goes into this depletion region then this electron would be pulled in this direction and sent to the end side due to this electric field so the first thing is it's because of diffusion then enters here Due to drift, it goes to the end side. But holes wouldn't be allowed to get into this intrinsic region because the electric field would push it out. Now let's say electron hole pairs are generated in the intrinsic region because of the incident light. Holes will be sent this way and electrons will be sent in this way. But in this case, the transportation is because of the present electric field. Whereas in P side, these electrons would actually diffuse and get into this intrinsic region. That's why it is written the electrons diffusion in this region. Whereas in this case, it is drift space where carriers would be moving because of the drift due to electric field present. And on the end side, when electron hole pairs are generated due to the incident light, holes would diffuse into the intrinsic region where the electric field would take these holes and send it to the P side but electrons would be pushed away even if they want to diffuse and go here. In this case, we have shown this is whole diffusion region. Now we will talk about three important parameters of a photo detector. First is the response speed. This talks about how fast a photo detector would respond to a change in the incident light. So the parameters which limit the response speed are three. So one is once electron hole pairs are generated and then electron holes are moving because of diffusion, which is a slow process. That is diffusion of carriers. And number two is now if the carriers are generated in the region where electric field is present, the carriers have to be separated and they should be transported to the terminals to be collected. In that case, the transit time becomes a parameter. So I'm putting down transit time. And the third one is capacitance of the depletion 
region. Now the capacitance of the diode in reverse bias would dictate the RC constant of the circuit where R is actually the external resistor we are talking about. If the RC time constant is higher, the response speed of the pin diode circuit would be slower. Which means when we see all these three parameters, they should be as small as possible. Which means the diffusion of carrier should be small, which means it should take very small time. And even the transit time should be small. So how do we make all these values to some extent controllable or to be made small so that it becomes very good at responding to changes in the incident light. So let's say diffusion of carriers. Now if you see electron hole pairs are generated, first it has to diffuse and come into this region where electric field is present. Which means how do we reduce this diffusion distance let's say. So that is the reason why we have made sure that the P plus region here is very close to the surface so that most of the light would go into the intrinsic region where the electric field region is close to the surface. That is the intrinsic region and the depletion region. Now coming to the transit time, the transit time is the time that the electron or hole would take to traverse the distance in the presence of electric field, the drift velocity. That would depend on how much is this width. And of course, if you look at even the capacitance of the depletion region, where we have positive charges on N side in the depletion region and negative charges on the P side in the depletion region. Now, even the capacitance of the depletion region would depend on this distance between the charges. Hence, these two parameters would depend on the width of this region where we have electric field. So let me take a point here that is they depend on the depletion width. So two cases, what if depletion width is small and another case where depletion width is large. We are taking two extreme cases and trying to find out what happens to drift time or transit time and what happens to the depletion capacitance. And number three, what happens to the absorption? Because ideally, we want the absorption to be more in the intrinsic or depletion region. So if depletion width is small, let's say, the drift time would be smaller. So that is good. But the depletion capacitance would be higher because the depletion width is smaller. The absorption in the depletion region would be less because the depletion width itself is small. So absorption is less, whereas when we come to the case of depletion width being large, the drift time would be higher because the carriers have to travel long distances, but the C depletion would be smaller and the absorption would be higher because most of the incident light would be getting absorbed in this region because the region itself is large. So most of the photons incident would get absorbed in the depletion region. In fact, here we have seen uh, two extreme cases like one is small one is large but the optimal compromise would be when the depletion width is in such a way that the carriers take a transit time which is comparable or in fact half to that of the modulation period. For example, let's say the modulation frequency is 1 gigahertz then the time period would be 1 nanosecond so according to this, the transit time would be half of that, which means the transit time is 0.5 nanoseconds. Now taking the saturation velocity of electrons to be 10 power 7 centimeters per second, then the depletion width should be somewhere around 10 power 7 centimeters per second times the transit time, which is 0.5 nanoseconds 10 power minus 9 seconds the depletion width would be 50 micrometers now one of the most important point for having a pin diode used as a photo detector is we have a very large region that we can choose and we can tailor how much region we want in which we can have electric field by choosing the thickness of the intrinsic region here and of course that would give us control to make sure or have depletion with W in our control 
Whereas if you look at a normal PN junction diode, if you want to use it as a photodiode, to control the depletion width, we'll have to think about doping, and yet we wouldn't get this much of depletion region because we want them to be highly doped, and yet we want the depletion region to be larger. That can be possible in PIN diode, in fact. So hence, we tend to have most of the cases pin diode used as photo detector. Now let's move on and see the next two parameters which are very important. Let me go to next page. The second parameter we are talking about is quantum efficiency. We take it with the symbol eta. Not to get confused, sometimes we put it with Q indicating it is quantum efficiency which is defined as number of electron hole pairs generated and collected to that of number of incident photons. We can find the number of electron hole pairs generated and collected by finding out how much is the current flowing here. So if you know how much is the current flowing, which is because of the incident light, that is IL, if you divide that with the charge value, we would get the number of carriers flowing or number of carriers collected by the photodetector. So this quantity is found. And now number of incident photons. If you know the incident power, that incident power, let's say is P in, the incident power, which is input, divided by H nu unit photon. Hence, we would get the number of photons incident. This can be rewritten equal to IL over P in times H nu over Q. This can further be reduced to simple form IL over P incident power P in which is incident power times 1.24 in electron volts divided by lambda in micrometers. And coming to the next important parameter that is responsivity which is in fact defined as the photo current in amperes divided by the incident optical power in watts so if you can write this this is nothing but the photo current that is generated the photo current is il over the incident power that is the input power we have seen here this can be written by including the quantum efficiency as IL by PN is equal to, we can send Q to the other side and H nu, we have quantum efficiency times Q over H nu. This can still be rewritten in a different form that is eta Q times Q lambda over H times C. And in fact, it can still be rewritten in a different form, which is eta Q times lambda, which is in micrometers over 1.24 in electron volts. So these are three important parameters we have seen. One is the response speed and what all parameters would affect response speed of a photodetector and quantum efficiency and responsivity. At times, if we have to detect lights which are very low in intensity, we cannot use the PIN diode in a normal way. So in those cases, we tend to go to a photodiodes called APD, which are avalanche photodiodes. Avalanche photodiodes are nothing but the diodes which are operated near the avalanche breakdown region where we have carrier multiplication. So the same PIN diode can be operated as a avalanche photodiode, in which case the operating reverse bias voltage would be very high in terms of 100 or 200 volts, in which case the multiplication factor would be to an extent of 100, which means if one photon is generating one electron hole pair, we would have a multiplication of 100, which means the amount of current that we see would be amplified which means it will add to initial stage amplification in optical communications to detect very small light signals. In that case quantum efficiency can be greater than 1 because we are having initial amplification 
coming from the device itself when we operate in the avalanche multiplication region. In a normal photo detector, obviously the quantum efficiency would be less than one. 